just a year ago. People were complaining about CPS spending a whole lot of money building annexes for majority white schools when there were perfectly good schools with black or Latino students nearby that those students could go to. And Janice Jackson and Pat Dow chimed in on this. You all want to hear what they said. Now, they were asking why you're spending all this money when some of these students can just go to Jenna or just go to NTA. This is what Janice Jackson said. Actually, I'm going to tell you what she said about this one first. So when they asked about why they're doing this at NTA, here's what she said. We think it's a good idea, but it's a complicated dance. We have an opportunity to create a comprehensive school that is integrated as well as diverse an open enrollment high school. That's what she said about this, a plan that would a school away from a school that is majority black. What did she say about that plan last year that would have integrated the school but would have inconvenienced the school that was majority white? This is what she said. It's a Pollyanna to think that just because CPS steps in with a new policy that people are going to integrate. And so when it was going to hurt black students, it was a good idea, but complicated. When it was going to inconvenience a majority white community, it was Pollyannish to think that a simple CPS policy would get them to integrate. What did Pat Dow say in the same two instances? When they wanted to shut, to bring those students from South Loop over to NTA, rather than spend all of that money, this is what Pat Dow said. Actually, when they wanted to shut your school down, this is what she said. Combining the previously separate elementary schools would allow for greater community integration. So she likes integration when it's going to inconvenience you. The two school communities are relatively separate despite the fact that both are in South Loop. This merger would break down barriers for a more inclusive and diverse neighborhood. So when it's going to inconvenience a school that has a heavy black and Latino population, Pat Dow says she's all for integration, that she wants a diverse neighborhood. What did she say last year when a plan to integrate NTA was going to inconvenience a far more white and far more affluent, affluent population. This is what she said. Right now I have some priorities, but I'm not taking on the entire issue of segregation of income and segregation of the races in the city of Chicago. That is not my role. Let me read that again. This is what your alderman said last year when integration was going to inconvenience a more affluent and more white population. Right now I have some priorities, but I'm not taking on the entire issue of segregation of income and segregation of the races in Chicago. She doesn't want to take it on the issue when it's going to inconvenience people who are more white and more affluent. She said at the end, that is not my role. All of a sudden, now that it's going to inconvenience you, it's her role. She's a champion of it. But we know she's not the real champion. She's carrying somebody else's toxic bucket of water, and she doesn't have the spine to stand up to him. And that person is on the fifth floor of City Hall. And I say that because when you all have to decide what you're going to do, this is extremely important. It's good that you went to the board meeting. The board's not elected. When Matt O'Shea tried to shut down our school, I had one thing to say to the parent group that was assembled. This is coming from Ron and O'Shea. We can go to the board, and we did go to the board. But we have to make O'Shea feel like his office is in jeopardy. 
because he's elected. Janice Jackson's not elected. Forrest Claypool's not elected. Ron and O'Shea are elected. We have to attack O'Shea so hard that he has to go back to Ron and say, I can't survive politically if I keep pushing this. And so I tell you, you have to attack Pat Dow so hard that she has to go back to Rome and say, I can't survive politically. Let me drop this poisonous bucket of water because I'm going to lose my office if I keep carrying it for you. That means you have to get petitions and go door to door in her ward talking about her hypocrisy. Let her know you going door to door in her ward talking to her constituents about her hypocrisy. She'll change her tone. And if she doesn't, then by going door to door in her ward, talking to her constituents, you will be building the infrastructure to ensure that if she doesn't listen to you, there'll be somebody else in her seat after the next election. Am I making sense here?